So now I want to talk to you a little bit about how we can orient ourselves around the neck by, uh, by playing out of different chord shapes instead of, uh, as many tend to do sometimes when, uh, when you're first learning, you just, let's say you're improvising over a C blues or C anything, and uh, people often, you know, tend to stick in the regular uh, minor pentatonic uh, blues box, as it were, which is uh, this one here. <laughs> And that's fine. That's a good. Uh, that's a good uh, safe spot to be. And uh, the thing is, you can find those notes uh, that are in this scale and and key notes for the you know uh, C uh, blues a bunch of different places on the neck. And a good place to start is by looking at different shapes of say a C seven chord on the neck. So here's one. Probably you all know this one. So this has the potential to be a whole new position. Check it out. I should say that I use, um, I don't tend to think too much in terms of scales. Um, I use almost, you know, all 12 notes chromatically at my disposal at some point during a blues um, or during what I play. They, they, all, they all fit somewhere, so they're not all to be avoided. But um, what I tend to do a lot of time is I use a combination of the minor pentatonic scale and, and the mixolydian scale. And that would give you... So those are the notes that, 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 that I'm looking for on the neck. So there's that position. I suppose you could call that the first position. Now, you also have a C7 chord here. And that has its own position and, and fingering of the same note. As you can see, same notes, but a different positioning of your hand and a different spot on the neck. And the cool thing about these different chord shapes is that as you're playing one, you might suddenly find that you have access to put your hand in another position, and that's a good way to keep like a flow of ideas and keep it interesting and not get yourself in a rut and get stuck jabbering on the same notes in the same space on the neck. So here's a way in which I can show you how to go from the first to the second position. And then you can go. And this will be my third position. And out of this, see, you got a whole new position here. This is a, this feels a little bit like a um, A minor pentatonic which is C major pentatonic, you know, that's, that's an old uh, shortcut uh, to sounding, uh, uh, to giving your stuff, you know, your blues playing a different texture 
play three frets down, and then you got the whole major pentatonic scale, and it's more sweeter. <laughs> That's our third position, I would call that. So, and then next one, well now you're here. The old familiar minor pentatonic box, which is, uh, you know, getting out of that box is, is why I'm making this segment in the first place. So, I'm gonna assume you're familiar with that one and move on from there. Check it out, you got a C7 right there. This is one I use a lot, where you have It's, uh, so it's, it's um, one series of frets up from this one, where I would put my index finger like on the 10th fret here in C, and have the root, the 5th, and the 7th with my pinky, and then the 3rd with my pinky, and I got the 4th right here with my index finger. And I got a whole cool little position. And uh, and then um, we're pretty much back to. That's the next position, which is just an octave up from the first one. Uh, that's how I navigate myself. It's a, it's a system of navigation, navigation around the fretboard, and um, and one that works well for me, and and, and it keeps me entertained, because um, if you do it a lot, you familiarize yourself with any kind of, and there's much, there's obviously many more shapes of C7 or some kind of C chord on different spots in the. In the fretboard, and they all can have like a little a little box around them for you to play solos out of. So as you're playing, you find you can go from one to another, and pretty seamlessly after a while. And it's the kind of thing that'll help you come up with new ideas and uh, and new things to play, and really keeping yourself entertained while you're playing. It's almost like a real time problem solving thing you go like a crossword puzzle you go oh now i'm here oh now i'm here okay and um it'll 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 keep you inspired you know once you start getting the hang of it once you start seeing all the different options seeing all the things you can do besides all the different things you can do besides that and even with the same notes but it'll still trigger you to do things a little different and keeping yourself entertained. And mostly, isn't that what it's about? Now, check it out. You can also, by tweaking a few notes, you can make the C7 into a F7, which is your four chord. And then, as logic would have it, two frets up from there, you got your five chord, the, G, the G7. So, for instance, let me show you my, here's my first, my first C7. Right? We, uh, that's probably the first C7 anybody learns. Now, if you move these two notes, the third and the seventh, down a half step, they become the seventh and the third of the four chord which is F, and ta-ta, we have an F7 chord. It currently has uh, no root in it, but uh, that's, you know, that's why you hire a bass player. He can hit that one. 
down there. So there's, there's, there's a way for you to get from your C7 and have almost the same stuff available to you in F just by moving a few trigger notes. shape the C7 I showed you check this out there's your F7 you can even add the 9 on top here your C7 Move the third and the seventh down, and you got the seventh and the third in F. And this one, I'm just making that one up. Let's do this C7, F7. You can add this if you want. A root on top. Or nine. So then you got a whole F7 shape too, which is awfully close to your pre-existing C7 shape. So that's another possibility, or another set of possibilities that open up when you think about the fretboard in this way and get out of the box. Now, one of my favorite licks, or moves, as I like to call them, uh, relate to, uh, incorporates um, these different kind of chord shapes in this position here, uh, which is the uh, second one up from the minor pentatonic box. <laughs> Okay, so here's the the lick. It involves a bend and a, and a and a chord bend. So, as you see here, we got where am I? <laughs> we got we got a C7 shape right here. And if you move these two down, you got a F7. And here's the F on top. Now here's my the thing I like to do is I like to bend the on this F7 chord, bend the root of the chord, which is the F on your G string, bend it up to a nine. And you can use that not it doesn't even have to be on the on over the fourth chord because blues the blues language is fairly flexible when uh, you know as it comes to tonality and um, and the uh, chord uh, gender you know major major or minor so you can incorporate that kind of bend uh, as a, you know as an alternative to for instance doing Right, which is pretty normal, uh, you know, minor pentatonic blues uh, box lick. Okay, now here's how I would do it, incorporating uh, that chord shape, the F7 chord shape, and the bend. your C7 back there. So, 
That's something you'll hear me doing a lot. It's two different ways of do resolving it. All right, so what I'd like to do now is uh, I'm going to play along to a track and keep uh, my own concepts here in mind and demonstrate some of these uh, things in action. How I can be uh, playing out of one chord shape and segue into another one and another one and another one still. And um, we uh, will just kind of see where the fretboard takes us. <laughs> 